G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and it is time once again for my weekly tip show. Now, as I'm sure you can all relate, I found it pretty difficult to tip so far this year. So, as a result, I'm gonna start trying to be a bit more bold with my predictions. I reckon I've been too conservative and that's why I'm not leading our tipping competition. As a result, I'm gonna pick a few roughies this week and I'm sure the fans of all those teams will hate me in the comments. Probably not as much as the Essendon fans hated me pre-season for tipping the Bombers to miss the eight. How's that looking now? But, anyway, Let's get straight into it. On the Thursday night, we have Adelaide and Geelong at Adelaide Oval. Melbet.com is offering odds of $1.75 for Adelaide and $2.08 for the Cats. The Crows are coming off their first win of the year and they put together a pretty impressive win in Sydney, winning by 26 points last week. It was a pretty good response for them after their poor round one showing against the Hawks. Brad Crouch in particular was really good. He led the way with 26 possessions and a goal. They played really well, but because they always play quite well in Sydney, I'm not really sure how much to read into it, particularly since Sydney kind of seemed be having their own problems at the moment. The Cats, on the other hand, couldn't be going into this with better form. They've just beaten two teams most considered premiership contenders at the start of the year. They beat Collingwood in round one and then annihilated the Demons by 80 points last week. They are the real deal in my opinion and the midfield is starting to perform exactly how we thought they might have last year. They're going to be too good and I reckon they'll win by four goals. On the Friday night, we've got Melbourne playing Essendon at the MCG. Now, at the start of the preseason, this game might have been billed as a potential blockbuster. However, as it turns out, we're seeing 17th play 18th. I know they say they're underdone, but an 80 point loss down in Geelong last week is pretty unforgivable for Melbourne. But equally, the Dons are probably the only side in the league that's actually faring worse than them at the moment. Is it season over for the loser? No, I don't think you can ever say a season's over for a team in round three. However, we know the stats and it's something like less than 5% of teams make the finals from 0-3, let alone 0-2. However, the loser of this game will be 0-3 and their season will be at a bit of a crossroads. Particularly if it's Essendon, because I think they're less capable of climbing back out of that hole, so to speak. Look, I'm only going to be able to tip on paper here because the both four lines are shit. I'm going to say Melbourne win by four goals. Next up, we have the Blues hosting Sydney at Marvel Stadium. Now, the Blues have put together two pretty encouraging performances to start the year, but so far, haven't ended up with the chocolates. They were pretty decent in round one against the Tigers and last week against Port Adelaide in Adelaide, which isn't historically a happy hunting ground for them, they pushed them right to the end. It was good to see Dow and Walsh put together some promising form yet again, and they were really able to support guys like Cripps and Murphy in the midfield. The Swans, on the other hand, had a pretty lackluster game yet again with a disappointing loss against the Crows. Amongst other things, I think they really lack goal scoring power at the moment. They really need some goal scoring support for Buddy Franklin, and I think that's why they really need to fast track the development of guys like Blakey and McCartan. Kennedy and Buddy did all they could last week to keep the Swans in the game but it was just a bridge too far for them. I reckon the Blues will go into this sniffing a potential kill and at $2.74 odds with Melbet, that is very juicy looking. I'm gonna say Carlton beat the Swans by eight points. Next up, we have a high stakes game between the Giants and Richmond at Spotless Stadium. Giant Stadium, Spotless Stadium, who cares? Both of these teams are going into this game coming off reality checks against premiership contenders. The Giants belted the Dons in round one, but as we saw from round two, that might not actually be that much of an achievement. Nonetheless, I think they're a good team, but they just got heavily worked over by the Eagles last week who started to gain confidence throughout the game. Now, they'll probably be disappointed with that result going down by 52 points, but traveling to up the stadium and playing the Eagles is probably one of the hardest trips in football right now. On the other hand, the Tigers season is falling apart at the seams. As we know, Rance, Hooley, Rewalt, Caddy, and Greg are all missing. They were also convincingly beaten by a pie side that just looked better all night in my opinion. The form line between these two sides is that the Giants have won the last two games between them in Sydney. As a result, I'm definitely going to have to tip them by 24 points. Next up, we have a pretty intriguing contest between two of the more improved sides so far in 2019. Brisbane hosts Port Adelaide at the Gabba. Now, we've seen the Lions come off two really impressive wins against the Eagles and North Melbourne away. And they'll be playing with a lot of confidence and belief at the moment. Lockie Neal was unbelievable with 43 possessions. Robinson worked tirelessly as a defensive forward midfielder. And youngsters such as Berry and McCluggage, amongst others, are really starting to come of age, it seems. Charlie Cameron also continues to remind us what an amazing player he is when he's on. He's a serious X-Factor wildcard for the Lions this year. Now, last week, the power got the job done over the Blues in Adelaide, but it came at a price with Amon and Watts both getting badly injured. It was quite a wet game and a bruising encounter, and I think that might have just taken the wind 
thinned out of their sales slightly. They must be stoked with the acquisition of Scott Lysette because he was their best on ground last week and he's turned into a fantastic ruck. Boak and Rockliffe in particular as well are really leading their way and continue their improved form. Then I've talked about guys like Rosie, Drew, Dersma and Butters who are all coming in and playing role straight away, which is awesome for the club. I'm really excited for this game and I think the power coming off a bruising game, like I said, having to travel to Brisbane, I'm gonna tip the Lions to win by 28 points. Next game is the highly anticipated grand final replay. Last week, the Pies accounted for the Tigers really easily. And as I said, I think they probably should have won by more than they did. Trelaw in particular is really playing red hot at the moment. And he's actually risen to second in our True Footy Player of the Year award. We also all know the type of player Dugowie is and he kicked five amazing goals against Richmond. I don't think West Coast have really quite worked out how to quell Dugowie yet, but Shepard is back this week and he didn't play in the grand final due to injury. He's a bit of a mismatch because he's probably a bit strong for Shep, but he's too quick for guys like Schofield. Taylor Adams was in my opinion, the best magpie on the field in the grand final, but he's not playing, obviously, but Dane Beams comes in. Personally, I think Hutch will actually go to Trelaw based on the form that he's in at the moment. There's also Darcy Moore who's in the mix in. He didn't play in the grand final, but as a tall defender, he really helps negate the Eagles' tall forwards. Now, the Eagles, I thought, were quite impressive on Saturday night against the Giants. They started pretty sluggishly, but once they got their confidence up and started playing their free-flowing football, they looked like their old selves again. By the end of it, I think they got a lot of their confidence back after that terrible round one game against Brisbane. Gaff is finally back from here is massive suspension and he's a huge into that midfield. Cripps, I think with his defensive pressure is also underrated how important he is to the side and he comes hopefully back this week as well. Luke Shuey and Dom Sheed have by far and away been the Eagles best mids and they've been brilliant this season but equally it's kind of concerning that they're probably shouldering too much of the load so Gaff coming in really helps that in that respect. I do think this is anyone's game and I don't think the Eagles really struggle at the MCG anymore. Nonetheless I'm going to tip with my head and not with my heart. Magpies haven't left the MCG so far this season and I think they'll start well and eventually they're gonna overcome the Eagles and win by 19 points. Next up, we have the Doggies hosting Gold Coast Suns at Marvel. The Doggies are somehow 2-0 despite me tipping against them both weeks so far and they deserve a heap of credit. To be honest, I love seeing them do well and it's great to see their very talented midfield start playing closer to the potential that we know they have. I've said it before, but we know what we get from Bont, McRae and Hunter, but it's good to see guys like Caleb Daniel, Mitch Wallace, Tom Libertore, Suckling really able to support. Their last quarter comeback last Last week was sensational and I think they might have announced themselves as a genuine finals contender this year. Equally, I was stoked to see the Gold Coast win last week. Not because it was the Dockers they beat, but actually because I think it's good for the competition. Honestly, it was a terrible game and the Suns dragged Fremantle down to their level and then belted them in the nuts. I mean, you could say they probably could have won by more had they not blown so many easy shots right in front of goal and dropped so many simple marks. Nonetheless, the effort and the spirit has been there for the opening two rounds and I think they're proving a couple of people wrong about just how bad they are. And continued effort is all you can really ask from a young team who's had a lot of disadvantages, let's be honest. To that end, despite the Suns going fairly well at the moment, I'm going to say the Dogs dispose of them by six goals. Next up, we have Hawks and North Melbourne at the MCG. And this is a really interesting clash because I think these are two teams nobody really knows how to categorize yet. The Hawks are really impressive in round one, getting the job done in Adelaide, and they look like they were going to do it again in round two before they were completely overrun by the Doggies. As I said in my True Footy Reacts video, I wonder if it's a trend after they lost a massive lead in JLT, which I, admittedly, I don't think you can read a whole lot into. But equally, it kind of opens up an interesting question for me, and that's how some teams seem to be able to cope with Hawthorne better than others. In particular, Adelaide and, I hate to say it, West Coast seem not to be able to cope with Hawthorne at all. Whereas the Doggies, despite going five goals down, were able to cope with it a little bit better. I don't know. I think time will test that theory. It'll be interesting to see. We are seeing enough good signs from the Hawks, though, to stay pretty optimistic. Jay Gorimira was fantastic again, and James Warple continues to impress despite being just a second-year player. Scully was able to play his first game for the club, and we know how good he can be. So once he gets his fitness back up, which knowing Scully probably won't take too long, then he's a good chance to be able to support them even more and that would mean good things for Hawthorne. Now, on the other side of this game, few teams have been more disappointing than North so far in 2019. Admittedly, the Dockers and Lions both played pretty good football on the day, but for a side like North who clearly consider themselves a finals contender, going 0-2 against similarly ranked teams is not good enough. It immediately puts a lot of pressure on them to win this game against Hawthorne or their season could be at an early crossroads. Now, the recruits in Hall, Dom Tyson and Polek were all pretty solid once again. LDU put in another promising performance as well and it's nice to see him build some consistency. But in my opinion, there isn't enough contribution across the board at the moment. I think they improved on round one with their intent, but clearly it wasn't enough to get the job done. But, 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 
I did say I was going to be bold. I got a feeling that in this game, the Roos are gonna come out of nowhere and beat the Hawks. The Hawks are the better team in my opinion, but tipping who I think is the better team has done shit all for me so far. I'm gonna tip North to somehow win by eight points this week. Melbet's also offering $2.62 on that game for North to win, so. I might jump on that. Now it's time for the final game of the round and it's Fremantle hosting St Kilda at Optus Stadium. Now Fremantle suffered one of their worst losses in a while in my opinion last week, losing to Gold Coast somehow by three points. They really just couldn't quite match Gold Coast with intent, especially in the dying moments, and they'll be really disappointed internally with that game. However, I probably wouldn't read too much into it because I think sometimes shit teams just have a habit of pulling better teams down to their level and then beating them. The one good thing about the Dockers losing and the Eagles winning is that my Facebook feed is no longer full of incoherent Dockers fans trying to sledge the Eagles. Equilibrium has been restored. That being said, the Dockers were excellent in round one and I expect them to continue that form in round three. Fife and Brad Hill were in awesome form in the midfield and Cam McCarthy is obviously in brilliant goal kicking form. I'd probably say the Dockers may be just carrying a couple of extra passengers than they normally would, but it's probably for the sake of development so you can kind of understand it. Now the Saints on the other hand are 2-0 somehow. Although you have to say their two wins so far are probably against the worst two teams in the competition. That being said, the eight points so far will go a long way to taking the pressure right off Richardson, which is a nice change for once particularly with John Walsfold doing so shit just down the road. It's nice to see someone like Jack Billings put together two 28 possession games in a row because obviously he's got a mountain of talent and the potential value of him realizing that talent is huge for the Saints. Now the Saints have ticked both boxes that have been put in front of them so far, but their form, in my opinion, isn't strong enough for me to tip them against Fremantle. I'm going to say the Dockers win this by 44 points. Now, before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to one of our loyal subscribers. Rachel Byers has come out of nowhere and commented what is probably a contender for comment of the year. She simply writes, fuck me tips over, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to say, Suck shit, Rachel. Serves you right for taking my advice. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. As, As I always say, if you like the video, hit like. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I also want to hear your tips in the comments, so fire away. If you like betting, as I said in the video, I've started betting with melbet.com, so if you're interested, there is a link in the description. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.